Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your driver's license is important so you can get back and forth to work, get your kids to school, and back and forth to daycare. If your license has been suspended because you can't pay your tickets, you can't do any of those things. Let's talk about Chapter 13 bankruptcy. You may have heard the tickets cannot be discharged, but they can be dealt with in a Chapter 13 case. Why not come in for a free consultation? The chapter you choose will make all the difference to your getting back legally on the road. Let's design a plan to pay off your tickets and restore your license immediately. I'm attorney Travis Gagné. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's Choose the right chapter. Rightchapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. This is sad, man. There's a 30 year old dude who was uh, posting in Reddit's relationship advice section. Oh, uh, God, I'm sure that's a great place to go for advice. Reddit? Well, you know, for I think for the millennial generation, you're right. I know they really look to Reddit for a lot of good stuff because you, you know everybody's there. It's a great cross section of people who are your age and really resonate with your kind of thinking. I would think the same way you did, Steve. But I feel like I'm just too old for to go and trust anybody on Reddit. But no, I get it. You got to go through. You got to get past some of the the the, the idiots that want to just yeah. be funny or trolls to yeah. get to the the good people that have actually decent advice. So that's you're right. I understand why someone goes to it, but my first thought is, geez, yeah, that's just a field day of just negativity. You're absolutely right. There's a lot of a-holes on Reddit. Mm-hmm. But hopefully, like you said, if this dude's patient enough and he can just ignore the trolls, he might get some good advice. Because this situation he posted about is brutal. So he's 30. His wife is 26. And she told him that she wants to use a sperm donor to have kids because he's not attractive enough. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to tell you something. Come on, I'm a sci-fi guy, and so these kind of stories I have seen. They've been told in all my shows. Uh, it brings me back to a great episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation called "The Masterpiece Society," where the entire planet was pretty people. They, they I was wondering if you're going to bring this one up. Yeah, you remember that one? Yes, I do. And that's what they were all about. They were like, "Look, here's the thing. You, you're probably a nice guy, but there's no way I'm making babies with you. You're just not pretty enough." Yeah, everyone had to be genetically perfect yeah and uh i this is real it's it's happening this is nuts yeah he says his wife how told do you him, say that to somebody you know that's the thing there are human beings on this planet that are oblivious to what a-holes they are like, like i i truly believe like i and i i'm on the same side if we ever do have a child i really do hope the child takes the the look um, grabs the looks from the wife's side oh yeah you've <laughs> ever seen you know you know lee you ever see lee majors kid uh, lee majors farrah fawcett uh-huh i mean look lee majors is an attractive man but farrah fawcett was the smoke show girl. Yeah, yeah the smoke show of the 70s and 80s and the poor girl looked like lee majors yeah see i don't I, I only hope for the best yeah but i mean they would never get to the point where we're like look we need to just remove you from the situation his wife says, uh, his, his, he says his wife told him, quote, if the baby had genes of an incredibly attractive and smart man, then he or she would live an easier life and be happier, end quote. Which, by the way, okay, it, yeah, th- that is just, a, what, a, what a horrific philosophy. And I mean, it never, it's never 100%. There's no get, guarantee. Yeah, right. you can get two really attractive people like Bruce Willis and Demi Moore and their daughter, Rumor, looks like Bruce Willis. Again, yeah, it's 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 uh, you never it's never guaranteed. Hot. I know, but she's got her dad's chin, so it's really? kind of it throws me off because I'm sitting here. I'm like, this is what Bruce. So you don't Willis think she's like. hot? You don't think right? I, I think she's was, cute, but I don't think you know when you have Demi Moore and Bruce Willis as parents. Oh, I've been seeing her recently. Yeah, you kind of like she oh, has. Okay, that's horrible. We're now we're horrible. We're just as bad as his wife at this point. I mean, she's still attractive, but yeah. Maybe I'm you're right. Wow. Oh yeah, she, she she doesn't look like Lee Majors' kid. Damn it, Lee Majors. Maybe kid I'm just attracted to Bruce Willis all yeah, the time. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I mean, how do you feel about Joe Gordon Levitt? Okay, that's you got jokes. That's great. No, <laughs> just saw that movie. He's a looper. All right, fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, you can imagine this dude was de- he was deeply offended by this, and that's why he went to Reddit. Um, and how about this? This this isn't the worst part of the story. He posted an update yesterday that after several hours of talking with his wife, he found out that she was having an affair with one of her coworkers. Oh, there you go. That's 
<laughs> Whenever somebody asks you an a hole question, oh, you okay. know that they're an a hole doing a hole stuff. So she's like, I think we should have someone that's more attractive than you, yeah. like John in sales. He'll be more than happy to be a donor. So he's and gonna, by yeah. donating, he's going to actually do the deed. To, yeah. You know, I mean, that's it's cost cutting. In fact, it's very effective. Oh yeah. I mean, that whole you know turkey baster thing could get expensive. Yeah. Damn, dude. God, that sucks. Here you are married, she's banging some other guy, and the way that you find out that she's banging some other guy, she first got to tell you, you're too damn ugly and I, wanna, I don't want to have ugly kids with you. And oh yeah, by the way, I'm banging John in accounting. Which basically means I just want an out for banging John in accounting. Yeah. You know what? They deserve each other. They really, really do. The guy and whoever the guy she's banging, because that guy, you know, at some point, that guy's not going to be good enough. Because this, this woman's just a douche. Bottom line. Sorry. Sorry, lady. Don't know you, but uh, I don't have to know you. Every time I think I've seen everything, Reddit comes up with something new. Yeah, I've, I've never th- heard of something along these lines. Even It's funny seeing some of the comments because somebody's just like, any chance she's already got someone in mind and waiting for you all to agree? There you go. And then the person writes, edit. Called it. Yeah, you did, buddy. You totally called it. Yeah, it's 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 not a it's not a pleasant part of what our society has become when it comes to you know the, the the people that want to have these ridiculous weddings that make you princess for the day where you're spending crazy amounts of money and it's all superficial. I mean, this is this 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 is, goes down that road. You know, you want to have the prettiest baby, therefore let me find the. the I don't want to do it with you. I want to do it with a handsome guy. See, the relationship would be over the minute she said, "I don't want my child to be unattractive like you." Yeah. Because, I mean, whether or not you find me to be like a a supermodel or something, you want to think that the person that you're in a relationship with finds you attractive. Yeah, in some way, shape, or form. In some some way, you're right. To To tell somebody that, then why are you with me? Yeah. That's what I would have to ask. And then the next question is like, why am I still talking with you? I need to leave. Right. I'm no longer attracted to you because you just said that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's no, what bad, That would be my response. Uh, you know, that's what I tell everybody. If you have self-esteem, you don't have to make anybody the bad guy. If they all of a sudden are not treating you the way that you wish to be treated, you go, you know what? Uh, you know what? You do your life, but I deserve to be treated better. I'm out. Peace. Mm-hmm. And, and you don't even make it about them. You take care of yourself and you feel so good about yourself that it doesn't matter that they treated you badly. You you're just like, you know what? I don't want bad service. Uh, you know what? It's just customer service. I want great customer service in every aspect of my life, including my marriage. I always liken it to friendships in a sense. Like, would you be okay with your close friends treating you this way? And if yeah. not, then why are you with somebody that treats you that way? Yeah, man. The person that you're supposed to be the most compatible and the most connected to, your best friend. Yeah. Would you let your best friend treat you that way? And that's, you know, that, I mean, I, I, Steve, it's, 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 it's a very, very sobering t- conversation. That's why you have to have good friends in life because sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees. You get that blind spot. Mm-hmm. I hope you have a good enough friend to go, hey, listen, dude, you're a moron. Here's why. Yeah. And, 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 and don't you, get a donor. Yeah. You're not seeing what we're all seeing. Now, uh, Keith Richards, uh, he's in the news because he's given up drinking, which Uh-oh. I thought was that was the only thing keeping him alive. I was about to say, put him. Yeah. And I feel terrible, <laughs> but it might be time to put him on a Deadpool because I think once you stop drinking, that's when he all of a sudden will die. Yeah, I mean, it, it's I mean, alcohol can be a preservative in some ways, right? <laughs> I, mean, I thought that was the only thing just keeping his body going. Yeah, yeah. He's um, says he's not drinking anymore. Says he has an occasional beer or a glass of wine. Well, let me tell you, if you are an alcoholic. There's no such thing as an occasional beer or glass of wine. So I don't know if that's why he stopped drinking. But what is he, 80? How old is he now? He's oh got to be close gosh. to 80. He's got to be pushing mid-70s, I would yeah. think. He says, quote, 74. All right. 74. He says, it's been about now. I pulled the plug on drinking. I got fed up with it. It was time to quit, just like all the other stuff. Oh, so he's dropped other stuff, too. Yeah. 74. <laughs> and he's like, all right, I think I'll stop drinking. Well, I'm, I'm hearing this, and it just, it just brings me to a story I was reading the other day about Ric Flair. You know, oh yeah, wrestling Woo! great. He had to be put in a coma. People thought he was going to die. Just some, you know, alcohol issues, health issues. Luckily, gets out of the coma. Stops drinking. He's been getting very healthy. But I just listened to an interview he was doing or a conversation he was doing with Steve Austin on, on Steve Austin's podcast, and Steve's like, "Oh yes, yeah, so now you can't drink it all." And he's like, "Oh, Steve, you know, I mean." I have a glass of wine sometimes or a beer, but it's not like how it used to be. And then granted, I mean, how it used to be is this guy was crushing like a case of beer a day. Yeah. But and now he just I read a story that says like a doctor says he's clear to to take bumps in a ring if he wants to do stuff in a ring again. And I'm like, wow, man, 
Might be time to pump the brakes on that. Yeah. 69, you almost died. Yeah, let's not get it back in the ring. There's no need to go uh, back in the ring. If you want to go back in the ring and be a colorful guy that doesn't have any physical contact, I'm all for that. But yeah, you're right, Steve. Rick, you gave us you gave us a lot of fun in the ring. We don't need to have you go in there and sacrifice the body, no matter what your doc says. He says, on my full speed ahead, guys, I've been cleared to do anything. I've been cleared to get knocked down in the ring. I don't know if they're going to use me in some capacity. And you know the clearances that they have to have with the health policy, which is so adamant. See, so it's not like he wants to. Yeah, adrenaline junkies do. You know, sometimes if you've got an addiction, you replace it with another addiction, which sometimes it's healthier. But in this particular instance, I've known guys that just love to get smacked around. They just love the physical contact. Yeah. And, I, and of course, for some of them, it was just a way to get pain pills. You know what? If I'm injured, oh. then I can go get myself some pain pills legally and continue that addiction. That I've seen some messed up stuff. It's like, there's one dude I knew. He was always injured. And then I was like, oh, you get to go get a prescription because you're addicted to the... Yeah. For some, I mean, I, I do enjoy, like, you know, playing you know, hockey and I'm a goalie and I do enjoy the feeling of, like, when, when the puck hits you. And sometimes it doesn't feel good, but, like, you're like, okay, I'm feeling so... And, like, even doing the wrestling stuff, I mean, it doesn't... It, 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 it hurts from time to time, but it's something about it. I do like that adrenaline rush. Yeah, well, I mean, look... Vic- and I hate pain pills. Like, I can't... I, I don't... Oh, ever, even yeah. when I'm, like... When I've been prescribed pain pills, I'll do everything in my power not to go near them. I just hate the way I feel. Well, yeah. I, I, and they, they, look, the opioid crisis is real. So mm-hmm. you, a lot of people are saying, I'm yeah. thankful I that I hate yeah. them because that would yeah. be awful. Yeah. Well, when it comes to pain, I mean, look, Vicky's told us that pain is a part of her, an aspect of her life. Oh, well, boy. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Well, that's the, like, the idea of bondage. It's, I mean, control, a little okay, bit of pain. I was pain. hoping we would be vague about Come it. On. Yeah. Be Come vague? on. Why be vague? you got to be open about these Come things. On, right. It's not like, you know, the Middle Ages when you were born. You like that. I just love when we go to the radio convention, Steve, and they think every time Vicky comes up with one of her ideas, they think we make her do these things. Nope. Yeah. Hey, baby. It <laughs> they, they doesn't enter their mind that there's actually a woman out there that enjoys this aspect of living. Yeah. They just think it's, oh, you perverted guys. It's like, no, you don't understand. Steve and I are lame. I mean, <laughs> we don't do anything. And Vicky, she's, yeah. Yep, I am the, the spicy, and you guys are... Specifically, BJ or the what? What do we call it? French vanilla. You know what? We found out that vanilla I'm actually. Bean. Yeah, we vanilla know bean. that Steve's lamer than me. You know that. There's a particular thing in life that Steve. Let's just say that Steve doesn't travel on all the highways in this country. Uh, all right. All right. That's all I'm saying. So, so he's he's lamer than me. That's all yeah, I'm saying. That's I, right. I, I will never get my brown belt. Okay. Mm, chocolate City. Oh, we've just disgusted Danny. I did, I knew it wouldn't take long. Danny, you don't get disgusted by much. Why are you disgusted? Are you are you in the world of karate? No, I have a chocolate protein bar today, and it's just not any right. appetizing. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Just put some peanut butter on it. You're fine. Oh. Today's a great day. <laughs> oh, yeah. I do love that. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to that, vanilla is definitely so, yeah, a good so way Vicky, to you describe can't call, me. Yeah, you, got, you see, he's lamer said, than I am. That's why I said French vanilla. Yeah. You, like vanilla bean. You don't know what I'm about. You're not about the crazy stuff I'm about. You don't know whether we're Bring all the whips. I, I, here's the thing. I, I'm discreet. I'm from the generation of discreet. I don't say what I'm doing in that area of my life just because that's my generation. Your oh. generation, which I'm not faulting. I think it's great you get to say what you like in life. But I was I was raised to be discreet, like no kissing and telling. Are you into like uh. the paddles and stuff? Again, what part of discreet don't you <laughs> well, understand? You already told us that you like to travel certain highways. So Well, I did that because you pissed me off. I really I didn't want to reveal that information, but I'm tired of being called French. I'm really tired of being called French. <laughs> vanilla. Vanilla bean. Yeah. Okay, how about... My the- wife's a happy woman. Granted, she's two states away, but... That's why she's a happy woman. But you know what? When those golden opportunities arise... Oh, you're into oh. that? Whoa. No, not Whoa. that. Whoa. Oh, you're definitely the chocolate vanilla swirl now. No, 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 no. Uh, it's more of like a lemon ice. Mm. Okay, no, oh. that's bad. That's, <laughs> this is the, the wonder why you get excited when I play this song. Okay, first of all, I don't get excited. I hate that song. I hate all of you now. BJ's, uh, I picked the wrong shower. phraseology. Yeah. When the wonderful opportunity, never mind, I'm done talking to you guys. <laughs> you know what, I've had it with all of you. So you're a yellow belt. I am not oh. a yellow belt. I don't dig that kind of, I don't go to Cleveland. I'm not a yellow belt. I don't like, to, I don't like to have my vegetables steamed. None of that. What would the feet belt be? Huh? Well, what's wrong with the oh, foot fetish? Oh, you mean the foot fetish? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Green belt? Why is it that? I don't why, know. Why is I'm that just a green belt? There needs to be a color for every belt. I know. Okay. Now I'm not yeah. excited. I'm you know why, why do I every time I feel like I talk to Vicky I just lose some brain cells that's the point yeah alright we got a popular actor let's talk you know what I'm changing the subject Steve alright okay 
So there's a popular actor that just shared a story about a time that he was hit by a car that was driven by a fan. Who's in the show Golden Girls, BJ? Okay, that's, you know... We're going to hear from that actor and hopefully no more from Steve at 817. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I know you're not a big fan of what Steve Carell's been doing with his acting career, Steve. Yeah, like taking it serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah really, I feel I mean, bad saying that, but I yeah. like it when he's just a goof. Yeah. It just goes to show you the different ways he's changed because I, I think of Steve Carell and I think of, of course, uh, one of his guys that, you know, was in there, Will Ferrell. I mean, those guys, you know, in early career, they were doing yep. movies together. And Will Ferrell s- does seem to be the same guy. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of wanting to see this Holmes Watson movie that he and uh, I John C. Know this. Oh, you haven't seen the commercials? Oh, the Cena movie. Yeah, the John C. Riley movie. No. Oh, they- John Cena's in the movie. I got excited. No, no. This is, it's, it's, I think it's called Holmes and Watson, right? Yeah, it is. And they both play, they're playing Sherlock Holmes and Doctor Watson, but it's but it's Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, the stepbrothers duo. It's rather it's it's pretty rare that I don't enjoy the dynamic between. Will Ferrell and John C. Riley, so I think this is going to be good. I hope you're right, but it is interesting to see that Will Ferrell is pretty much Will Ferrell. Yep. Like, he hasn't changed, whereas Steve Carell, he has, and some of us may not like it, but boy, he's got a lot of acclaim. The guy, is, his career may endure longer because he's made the adjustment and made some evolutions. And that's good for him. Like, I'm never going to be the person that's going to go on like some kind of a, on social media or, or tag and be like, whatever happened, man? You suck now. Like, Steve Carell just no longer really exists in my in my world when it comes to uh, if I see a Steve Carell movie is out I'm not like whoa I need to see it you know it's just, he's kind of moved past my my taste range because I know he'll come that's back that's cool the pendulum will swing back he'll do a bunch of serious movies maybe he'll get really popular might even win an Academy Award for a serious movie who knows uh, and then I know someday he'll come back and he'll basically do you know yeah I love Lamp he'll, he'll come back to that someday he was on Ellen Steve and he shared a great story about a time that he was biking and got hit by a fan driving her car I actually got hit by a car a couple of weeks ago. No. I was riding and I made a turn and I didn't see the car behind me and they hit me from behind. So I went up over the handlebars and I thought, well, I'm going to tuck and roll. And I rolled and I got up and I was fine. And the woman who was driving the car jumped out. She was distraught, obviously. Yeah. And I went over to her and my bike was sort of stuck under the front of her car. And she's saying, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's Steve Carell. <laughs> And she was so excited that she hit me. I guess, yeah, in a way, that would be cool that you're like, I'm getting to meet Steve Carell, forgetting that, oh, wait, I'm meeting him because I ran him over with my car. I couldn't imagine what that would be. Did you ask for a selfie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I mean, how do you not? We should take a picture of you because, you know, for insurance purposes. Now, just, I'm going to hold it and smile with me. <laughs> and here's the thing. How about your life? Normally, if you get hit by a car, you're ready to go. You are the worst driver. You suck, whatever, because mm-hmm. I've known friends that have been hit. They drive, they, they ride their bicycle because they've been hit by cars and it sucks. But you're Steve Carell and if you're, well, you got to be nice, right? Because that's a fan. I mean, what do you, you know I don't I mean? know, man. I feel like you have the right to get annoyed with somebody who hits you. Even and if it's a super fan. And if that super fan doesn't take it well, well, come on, man. Man, I don't know. I remember one time, it was never on that level, but it was someone who was a listener of the show, and I didn't know it at the time. They texted the next day, and they like cut me off, and I gave them the... I didn't flip them off. I don't ever get road rage. It's not worth the, the just that energy anymore, man. Just whatever. But I did the arms, and you're like, what the hell? Like, you know? Jeez, man. And then the next day, there's a text from the person, like, I, I was in the wrong, and I'm sorry. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. No worries. I'm not mad. See, I do love that, though. I love that at least there was an apology, because that does solve the road rage problem, doesn't it, Steve? If, yeah. somebody, if you throw your arms up in the air, and you see the guy go my bad oh i stop right yeah, away yeah, it's yeah. The, then you go all right dude you know what you get it you're bad we're good but then there's some people where i've been guilty of doing something where i'm just like look man my bad i'm sorry and i give them the look like i know i'm in the wrong and they're still flipping you yeah off see that's bad yelling and screaming and i'm just like geez man i feel bad for anyone in your circle of friends yeah you've got to you, you seem like a person who sucks at life that's the cycle of forgiveness right there especially on the road and i did it just yesterday totally was spacing out i don't know how i didn't see this guy pulled out right in front of him luckily we he stopped and didn't hit me i immediately go mea culpa dude because you know what i'm the one pulling out onto the road this is all me and i mean hey, that should end it it's got to end it because look everybody makes mistakes yep you know i mean tell so but yeah anybody that still continues with the rage and eh, maybe i ought to talk to somebody how about uh this is a very good point i never really thought of it this
this way, but this person, the text was absolutely right. Steve Carell's doing the same thing that Tom Hanks did with his acting career. Yeah. And I never think about Tom Hanks yeah. abandoning doing stupid movies because, I mean, look, Bachelor Party was a dumb movie. Well, Bosom Buddies. Bosom Buddies was a great television show. But that's how, yeah, he started as a comedic actor. You're right. absolutely right. I mean, some of those movies in the early days were really dumb. I enjoyed them. But he's morphed into being... I mean, an Academy Award winning actor, and I, you know, and I, and I love to see comedic actors actually get it done because comedies are not taken as serious by the Academy as uh, as dramatic movies are. How many comedies do you ever see win Academy Awards? And I've been so pissed because there've been some really great comedy movies over the years. Then Shawshank I, Redemption. Uh, right? Shawshank was yeah, you're right. That's probably the only comedy that really, yeah. um, <laughs> and it bumps me out because they turn their nose down at comedies, and yet we've seen some great actors who are really good with their comedic timing that actually show you know what it takes some good chops you don't all have to be Meryl Streep in order to be uh, you know to be considered a good actor it's a little different but I do love that Jordan Peele who's known for being just a silly awesome comedic actor directed and wrote Get Out oh, which Vicky, you're right. amazing you're right Jordan Peele I think a man I mean I hope I don't curse the guy but I think this guy is going to show uh, just how much talent and how many great movies that are going to come out of him you're absolutely right uh, it's a, that's actually a great example yeah because- I know um, Keanu was fun. I, I love that movie. I dug Keanu, and um, I think Rev liked it. It was a talking cat. Oh yeah. God, I loved it. Yeah, Keanu was good. Did you see? Did you see Get Out yet, Steve? No. Oh, yeah. dude. Honestly, up until right now, I thought it was a comedy because he's involved in it. Oh, dude, this no. is such a great movie. What's it about? It's it's a scary movie about wow. a guy that... A young but, African-American visits his wife, gr- white girlfriend's parents for the weekend where uh, his simmering uneasiness about the reception of him eventually reaches a boiling point. Dude, it it's... It's real creepy. And it's a great, a great, it's it like, it, it like what's going on when you find out what's going on is awesome. And there's really good social commentary, but it's not like in your face. They're really good at being subtle about it. Is and it's super it, scary. No, it's, it's, it's no, more like a thriller. Okay. Yeah. We, yeah. Yeah. There's, I I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just gauging on whether yeah. I need to watch this alone or watch it. Or if Probably I can rent this with my wife. I don't know. I don't know about uh-huh. that. I think your wife should dig it. There's not a lot of gore in the movie. I mean, not really, but there is. No, like, she's, she's cool with a thriller. Okay. Yeah. It's old school it's suspense. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, and the way oh, it no, goes down. Totally fine. Oh, yeah. It's the, just, just over, you know, just the, the ridiculous amount of gore type of movies is what she's not a fan of. Yeah, no, this is, this reminds me, and this is what I love about Jordan Peele. It has the feel of what old school scary movies used to be like, where, you know, you, you sat on the edge of your couch and they didn't shock you with gore. They actually shocked you with, like, what the hell's going to happen? Like, you, you, you could really feel like you were the main character going through, like, oh my God, this is creepy. What the hell is going on? And maybe you shouldn't go into that house kind of a thing. And it's not because you're going to get hacked up by Michael Myers or anybody. It's like, there's some S going down that we had no idea that humans would be all... Yeah, it's a great movie. Get Out's a really good movie. And I think you can probably get it free somewhere, Steve. So it's get, get Out is way overrated, Steve. <laughs> Just got texted it. I, I got news for you. The only reason it was overrated is because somebody overhyped it. It's a good movie. I, 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 I'm sorry. I think people gotta they gotta give credit where credit's due. Get Out's a good movie. It's really well done. So we went to the point. Keanu doesn't talk in the movie, Steve. I thought Keanu talked. I thought it. Didn't no, I thought you Keanu Reeves. Oh, no, you got no, Keanu. No, no you yes, thinking, yes, no, because there was like a weird acid trip fever dream sort yeah. of thing in the middle of it, where oh, okay. Keanu no. Reeves voices right. Keanu the right. King. That's right. Yeah, I yes. forgot about that. Okay. Yep. You're not wrong, Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he wasn't talking for in the whole movie, but I forgot about that scene. So he says, "Get out" can be compared to a Hitchcock film. Yes. Yes. Good call. Oh, perfect. We just went on the Tower of Terror. Oh yeah, dude. I, I think I think you both will like Get Out. <laughs> Disney really ride do. movie, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Hitchcock inspired. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, such a good movie. Get Out. I like it a lot. Oh, if you're gonna do that whispery voice, it has to be good. Mm-hmm. Get Out. Nice. Got a new survey here because you know what? We need to know how to celebrate the perfect Christmas. Mm. Ooh. Okay. What's your okay. perfect Christmas? That's a good question. Well, this is this is like from the beginning to end. Like well, how you Christmas should start, day? yeah. How you start the day, all the way to how you do the day. This is including Ooh. what time you get up, you gotta, uh, what time you open the presents, when the food comes out. But don't you back it up twenty four hours? I think Christmas Eve is part of Christmas. Oh, yeah, because Christmas Eve is the day where we all get together with the family and eat like crazy people yeah. and have just a blast and just play some games and do the the, the white elephant thingy. Oh, that's a, you know what? That's a fun tradition. Yeah. See, I'm so far away from my family. It's just my you know, it's just Kathy and the immediates uh, and the two kids. So we don't have a big family where you do that. But that does sound like a fun tradition. Then Christmas Day sometimes it, it alternates. But then Christmas Day is really just wake up presents, go to. Either 
either our in-laws and just have like eat some sandwiches, like something like cold cuts and fun stuff like that, or we go to the other oh, wow the, the other the dad side of the family and hang out with them and eat some great food and have some great conversations too. So you guys don't do a gigantic meal the way Thanksgiving is because that's what Christmas was for me. Is like it was it was no, on the Christmas level of Eve. Thanksgiving Day was Christ- where you had the big meal. Christmas Eve is the big meal. Oh, Christmas is, was our Christmas Day, day sometimes is, but I mean I'm still eating like a champ regardless. <laughs> Christmas Eve is the we casual eating man. for us, like the sandwiches or whatever we're talking about. Like we might get some takeout, have it ready so we can just mm-hmm. chill later on Christmas Eve. Whereas the day is when we're having the big meal. Yeah. That's funny. How we all have different ways. It's all, it's perfect Christmas to me is really Christmas Eve. What's the perfect wake up time? How about this? Uh, the minute I open my eyes. <laughs> 6 a.m. Yeah. 6 a.m. Christmas, Christmas Day? Dude, I become a four-year-old again when it's... Wow. Aww. Yeah, like I sleep in it until at least eight. Now me and Lulu are ready to open up our gifts. Wow. How about you, Danny? Well, it's the same for me because whenever I wake up is fine. But no, when you have a kid, <laughs> Lily bro. jumps on me super early. So it's like 6, 6.30. Yeah. I don't kids, know if that's perfect. I would probably say Christmas. So you'll be home so she can do that, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, I was going to say, will she Skype you if you're not home? <laughs> yeah, no. Why no. do you keep Skyping me? Wake I, up. Wake up, Dad. Wake I always up. go home for Christmas. That's so cool. She she likes to jump on my head and tell me, hey. Lulu does that too. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> okay, again, he has a child. You have a dog. We both do. <laughs> yeah, that's not, no, that's not your child, Steve. Uh, Rev actually hit it on the head. Uh, they are, they're saying in this survey, the perfect wake up time for Christmas morning is 7.56 a.m. Oh, Rev was right nice. there. Yeah. I like that. I think that's good. 7.56. Mm-hmm. All right, now. Why do they have to narrow it to 7.56? Maybe they did the average. Math and algorithms and things. Round it up. So how much uh, how much snow on the ground? Because that's the next thing they algorithmed. Ooh. I've never had a white Christmas. Whoa. Ooh. What, are you yeah. racist? Well, you know, I guess. Yeah, he lives in Al- Albuquerque, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, there is snow there, but it snows like once a year, and it's never on Christmas. Last year, you guys woke up to a white Christmas here in Seattle, and I saw the pictures, and I was like... Come that was on. really cool. Yeah. That was very cool because we don't get a lot of white Christmas in Seattle proper here either. It, the best part about that was it was gone in the afternoon as well. That's yeah, the best kind, kind. which really helps. Like, do it on <laughs> Christmas and then just be done with it. A perfect dusting. Yes. We've had it a couple times. I feel like maybe two or three times since I've lived here since mm-hmm. 97 that there's been a white Christmas and it does make the day better. It needs to be a, like a good four to six inches. Well, oh, look at Vicky right on there. Are we talking Christmas? Oh, oh, hey. I mean, I'm talking about two different things. Two things can be right. Yeah. Uh, four inches is actually the average. They're saying that's the perfect amount of snow. Because it yeah, looks you can so shovel pretty. It. Yeah. You can throw snowballs. You can still drive in that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, depending. Well, yeah. Seattle, no, you can't. <laughs> All right, perfect Christmas, real or fake Christmas tree? Fake. <sighs> Just fake. fake. Yeah, you guys are wrong. We usually do real. Yeah, that's what the, that's what these people are saying. Real Christmas tree. I I think with those uh, what are the, the pine sticks that you guys told us about yep. the pine aroma sticks the the test the pine sticks <laughs> yeah. pine, pine, pine sticks make you or, f- yeah, you'll yeah. forget a real tree when you get those in there. Those things are great. I gotta buy some of those. They're great and surprise my wife. Where can you get them again? Like Target, I think. Oh, Hobby stores. Lobby at stores. Sarah, would you write down <laughs> pine sickles for our day out? I think that was so we can buy some. I don't know <laughs> where. You know, my wife buys them. I don't know. Hobby Lobby. Well, ask your wife. It's uh, she's a text away. Well, not now. You don't do it now. <laughs> also, the look on Steve's face, I go, I don't ask my, I ask Steve to do a lot for this damn show, which I think a lot of it's crap and he should roll his eyes. This is the first time he's ever rolled his eyes at me and it might be the easiest job I've ever asked anybody to do. Text your wife a question. Hey, babe, what are those sticky things that go in the tree? Yeah, and Steve looked at me like, HMU, HMU, LOL. They yeah. have them at Target, buddy. Uh, yes. That's probably where we got They have everything that, in Target. Or Fred Meyer. Yep. Ah, oh, Freddy's. Yeah, well, Sarah loves Fred Meyer, so any reason to go there, she'll be happy. Also, if you don't like the pine ones, they sell them in cinnamon flavor, too. Mm. Now, pine, That's I mean, an OG. I'm just saying that you can't have Jesus, your Jesus, who has a cinnamon tree? tree? What are you people? Oh, my God, that'd be kind of cool. It's you might as well get, like, a pizza scent. You know, you millennials Ooh. are ruining every tradition America's ever had. Why does your Christmas tree smell like a Cinnabon? <laughs> because, yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, they got those pine cone bags that they mix in with cinnamon. That's we use yeah. those. Those things are great. and gives a good cinnamon really? smell. Yeah, yeah. They do cinnamon and pine cone. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah. All right. You can get them at, like, Winco and stuff. Yep. Also, it says if you buy a fake Christmas tree, you need to reevaluate your life. Oh, come on. Man, I wanted a real one, but my wife didn't. Yeah, that person's real is great, but my wife hates the spiders that come with a live tree. That's exactly why we stopped getting a live tree. We used to get a real tree every year and go to the, the tree farm and yeah. do the whole cutting it down. It was always a blast, but then some spiders came out of a tree, and that ended that. That ended all that. And one. honestly, I don't miss it one. <laughs> I, I, I miss the fun of going to the tree farm. That's always, like, a, a cool, like, couple's thing to do, but I don't miss having a real tree tree and all the pines and I love our our, our fake tree is perfect. You should just put your fake tree outside and pretend to cut it down and then bring it inside. You bring it with me. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. 
could like put it on a little sled, carry it home. What's the perfect number of presents according to this uh, survey uh, of the perfect Christmas? What is the perfect amount of presents for one person? Yes, I'm gonna go four. Wait, to give uh, or to four. receive? I imagine to get. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, four sounds nice. Four, really? Yeah. If we're playing prices right, I'll just go five. <laughs> oh, you such a dude. All right, Danny, how about you, buddy? Uh, three. Oh, yeah. See, Danny's playing Price is Right, and he did it wrong. Ah! Uh, yeah, Rev's the winner. Uh, seven presents is actually the... Uh, that the, seems like a lot. I pr- they probably wow, count really? socks Are and Are we underwear. counting stocking stuffers? Well, I, I don't... They, I, I, that's a good question. I would... If it's wrapped, I count anything wrapped as a present. Even sometimes you'll wrap something that... Eh, I wrap sometimes a stick of... Uh, a pack of gum. That's a present. <laughs> and put it in the stockings. I, okay, even though it's in the stocking, it's still wrapped. I think anything you wrap is a present. Only three more gifts after that stick and pack of gum. Yeah. See, our family overgives then, because I know we get seven or more presents. Seven or more. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking four or five. That feels about right. Wow, I gotta, I gotta scale down. I always feel like... You know what? That's the one thing my dad did right. You know what? I mean, I mean, there's a lot that I actually... Here's the thing. I have reflected upon my dad's life okay. as I've gotten older and realized the guy was an amazing man. But I, he, he and I did not get along when I was a kid. Two and, different people. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, but the more I get older, the more I realize, oh, wow, this dude really had his act. He had his act together. My dad knew what was up. So I have great appreciation for him. But the one time when I was younger where I thought he was spot on was Christmas. My father, was he loved that holiday, and we always had great Christmases. I mean, the rest of my life, I would be like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing with this guy. But Christmas time, he and I saw eye to eye. That's cool. Yeah. And we, he, we always had every present we could want. We always had every present we could want. I never remember having a shortage of presents in my life. And I will tell you this. We were not a, a rich family by no means. We lived in a poor part of town. Uh, my dad really drove, you know, he drove a broke-ass car for the longest time. But he always made sure the kids cool. had whatever they wanted for Christmas. Always did. My mom was big on if I'm getting five gifts, so is my brother. Yeah. So it was always like she oh, yeah. needed it to be even. Yeah. I have that problem with these two, Sarah and Joe, because they will they will just calculate. The two of them will bring me aside and go, when they were little, why is it that Joe got this? And Joe would go, you know, I, my calculations show that financially Sarah did much better than I did at Christmas. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, these two litigators over there. So, wait, one was more worried about the, the quantity and the other one was worried more about the price of it. Yeah, Joey, he, Joey took it high level, you know, and then Sarah was just like, why has he got more than I do? I don't understand. And Joe's like, Sarah, if you realize that if you add it all up, your presents are much more expensive than mine. And I've been sitting there with my wife going, why can't we just give my kids up to somebody for Christmas? Next year, I'm giving my kids to somebody. Oddly, I think this was a conversation that happened at Sarah's birthday party. Oh, yeah. 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 They, oh, yeah. Joe, Joey, well, yeah, that conversation will happen. <laughs> yeah. That's why I think about both of them. I'm getting them nothing. The two of them live a charm life. Don't they? And they're still bitching. Yeah, they are. How <laughs> dare you two? How many Christmas movies is the right amount of Christmas movies to watch for Christmas? All One. of them. Oh. <laughs> Bad <Okay>. Santa. <laughs> All right. There was two Spectrums right there. All of them and one of them. Yeah, I think that it says here five, and I think that's too much. Just one played over and over and over again. Christmas Story on TBS. <sighs> 24 is, hours of it. That is pretty solid that they have that. Mm-hmm. That See, I'd rather more. I, I'm more of a fan of just having Christmas music playing in the house. I like yeah. that, as, as opposed to watching Christmas movies or having the like the Yule log on YouTube playing the whole time. I'm fine with. that. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I saw some dude. I was in California. He had the high def Yule log. It looks really good. He had a giant screen TV. Had his curtains open because on Balboa Island, everybody walks around to see all the great houses decorated. And this dude just had it wide open for us to sit and watch his Yule log with him. He was on the couch, had his <laughs> curtains open, and all of us were sitting on the bench outside watching his. You'll log with him. It's the weirdest thing, but then that's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, but where these people live, it's got a walkway that everybody uses. So yeah, there's that kind of neighborhood. Some neighborhoods you see a different type of Yule log. Well, there's that <laughs> someone's home. <laughs> Got no problem with that. All right, so you're putting together top three Christmas movies you're going to watch. Oh yeah, Bad Santa. Ooh, that's one. Two more. Yeah. You want two more? Okay. Yeah. Uh, we just have to pick three three go tos. Okay. Um, well, then I do. Do you count those little like Rudolph things as movies? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Well, then it's got to be Rudolph and Santa Claus is coming to town. Those are the those, those are the big three. I'm Rudolph gonna... is the story of Rudolph. Yep. When seeing and then Santa I'm Claus. Aware of that, PJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Santa Claus is coming to town is with uh, the Burger Meister Meister Burger. So when I was a kid, March of the Wooden Soldiers was the main one, Ooh. which is like now looking back on yeah, it, not no. really a good movie. No. Uh, Bad Santa as well. Yeah. Elf. 
Oh, okay. Christmas top. story. Oh, that's my three. Ooh, gotta, see? Oh, you're right. Elf is good. I have to knock one of those claymations out. I'll definitely go with the Christmas story yeah. because this is tradition. Yes. And then I'll go with Gremlins for the Christmas Eve movie. Ooh. And then Die, Die Hard, Hard because it is a damn Christmas movie. You know what? The God of Christmas, Bruce Willis, has oh. deemed it's not a Blah. Christmas movie. I might have to. I might have to replace Christmas story with what this texture says, and I 100 percent agree. I'm putting it up. I'm I'm I'm, bu- I'm, dum- I'm dumping Christmas story from my list. And I'm going with Chevy Chase's Christmas Vacation, <laughs> National Lampoon. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. my number one. I only yeah. give it a nod because of Johnny Galecki, but honestly, that movie doesn't hold up for me. You're nuts. I know. I know I am, but I... Uh, I and, and also, I was not... I, I feel sad, but A Christmas Story was never part of my life, ever. I only watched A Christmas Story three years ago for the first time. Wow. Because my kids never watched mm-hmm. it, I never watched it, so every the love everybody has for A Christmas Story, I never knew. I never yep. even knew about the movie. So it's just not on my radar as like my top. All right, Danny. Christmas Vacation, yep. Home Alone 2, Lost oh, in New York. Oh. Yeah, so you I have like the same it. opinion of Home Alone 2 like I have with Grease 2. Yeah. Better than the original. For sure. Really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, I disagree, well, I'm, but okay. I'm going to have to watch Home Alone 2 again. It's I don't okay. Know. All right. Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Holt Christmas. That is a good one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. With, with Jim Carrey. Okay. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay. I love it. No, My yeah, girlfriend I made like me that watch one. it. Sucks. Are no. you oh, kidding me? Oh, he did it so oh, well. He, that's a God. good film. It's not. You, you, you two are the only morons that think it's a good film. It's, well, you're overvote. It's the trailer that's been going on Netflix right now. It's just the. All right, what does it say on Rotten Tomatoes? All right. Please. The, everybody thinks that that movie was horrible. Not Danny Except, and I. Well, you, first of all, you and your movies. Come on, fantastic. And Danny only, likes Good Charlotte. So let's. I think we rest our. I'm case. the only sanctioned movie reviewer in this room. <laughs> you are sanctioned by nobody. That's true. Stevie Tomatoes. Is yeah, a, uh, a Twitter, Twitter phenomenon. It's on Twitter. Okay. Do any of you have a movie review Twitter? I, I'm no. going to have to start one next year just to oh. shut you up. It was 52%, yeah. which is better than most other movies. That's actually a lot better than I expected it to be. Yeah. Still rotten. All right, Vicky, what's your three? Uh, Home Alone 1. Ooh. Okay. Okay. A Muppets Christmas, uh, the oh, Christmas Tale. That's a nice oh, nod. Yeah. I love the Muppets. Uh, the Christmas Carol, excuse me. And uh, I don't really like a lot of uh, girly flicks, but I do love the holiday, like chick flicks. I don't even know that movie. Uh, it's got Jack Black, uh, Kate yeah. Winslet. What about Cameron Four Diaz. Christmases? I love that one, too. That's I have an that honorable one mention. Yeah, it's not yes. bad. Four yeah. Christmases is a fun movie. If I had four, that would be my fourth. Oh, man. All right. Well, it looks like, you know what? It says watching five Christmas movies on this list. You could, you could easily get that done with what we've given you. Yeah. I mean, Sarah and I are the only one that really like to watch Christmas movies, though, uh, out of the t- out of the household. Sarah and Joe, uh, Sarah and Joe, I should say, Joe and Kath, eh, not their thing. We got text, Grinch with Jim Carrey, amazing. Grinch is my second favorite movie ever. Oh, God. Grinch, and that's Christmas or not. Grinch with Jim Carrey, the best, you fool. Ugh. Jim Carrey as the Grinch was the best. Right. No, it's funny because it's a really I, good movie. I wanted to Ugh. hate it. Like, I really wanted to hate it. I've never seen it before this year. And my girlfriend was like, you've never seen it? And I was like, yeah, because I was talking about taking Lily to see the new Grinch with Ben Benedict Cumberbatch. Oh, yeah. And she was like, no, that movie is terrible. Like, that Grinch is terrible. Jim Carrey is the only Grinch that will ever matter in this world. Oh, my God. Boris Karloff is the only Grinch that no, will ever matter. Boris Karloff. That? Like a That's the original the Grinch. That's the guy who played the Grinch. Well, he's no Jim Carrey. Oh, he's better than Jim Carrey. That's debatable. See, that's the problem. See, I grew up with the original. I can't like anything else. I was going to say, he died before I was even born. I that mean, doesn't mean the, the Grinch is still not a great, the cartoon. Well, I'm just saying. Jim don't... Carrey eats glass and says bad words. He is the Grinch. He doesn't so say. BJ, Bo- you're so wrong. Jim Carrey's the Grinch is awesome. Uh, Boris Karloff didn't have to eat glass to be the Grinch. He was just so awesome as the Grinch. Oh, he was, did such a great job. See, that's just, this is a generational problem. You're speaking to deaf ears, man. None of us care. You know that in about, what, 10 years, some 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 Generation Z person is going to yell at us and tell us that Benedict Cumberbatch is the best Grinch. You know that's yeah. going to happen. Yep. Well, they'll be wrong. <laughs> yeah, of course they'll be wrong. Just like BJ's wrong right now. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yesterday, we were shocked that Steve didn't get this one right, and the fact that he didn't get it right away. What is the only war fought between Canada and the U.S.? Uh, Winter Olympics. No? Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Civil War. No. Um, World War I. Oh, no. Steve. It's Steve. World War II? No. Bad answer. What do you always right. answer? The War of 1812. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look at that, dude. 
We were. I, I thought for sure that was a gimme, and you didn't get it. Twice, I think, in playing B Migs, the answer was the War of 1812, and both times, I did not guess that. That's yeah, why dude. I love to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Rev, Rev is hitting you right. He just gets the vibe when to ask a question like that. that he goes, I don't think Steve will answer it. All right, here's a cool thing, man. You get to play Beat Migs, or do you? How about, you know what? We've got our buddy Justin Ruppel, great comic. He can play for you. 206-449-1181. Do you want to play Beat Migs with Justin Ruppel on your side? Call 206-449-1181. We're playing Beat Migs at 847 on The Rock. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. He's here right now and has agreed to answer more of your questions about bankruptcy. How do I figure out who my creditors are? Now, people a lot of times have had a lot, a long time of not having good credit and having collections, and so they, they're concerned that uh, you may be concerned that you, you won't be able to find all your creditors if you file bankruptcy. How will I know which collection agency has my credit card bill from 10 years ago now? Uh, and that's, that's something it's hard to keep track of when because credit collection agencies transfer your debts all over the place but we will pull all your credit bureaus and by getting all three of your credit bureaus we'll be able to tell who has your credit and debt now uh, which collection agencies have had it in the past and we'll make sure that we file all your creditors when we file your bankruptcy so that nothing slips through the cracks thanks travis if you have more questions about bankruptcy you can reach out to travis anytime at choose the right chapter.com that's choose the right chapter.com Thanks for listening.